GDTEC KaiFest. Well, this is one expensive printer, more than $2,000 to be exact. This is pretty crispy price tag. In this video, we will find out what this printer can do, what unique features this has, and most importantly, is this worth the price? Stay tuned. First, of course, unboxing. This box was big and heavy. It weighed 74 kilograms, and I really struggled to get this upstairs. For the unboxing, I really recommend to find someone to help you. When I finally got this printer out of the box, I removed all the protective materials and the printer was ready. There is absolutely nothing to assemble. Except adding those filament holders, but this is pretty obvious. Also, in the box is everything that you need for 3D printing and maintenance. One nice toolbox, one extra print pad is different than the standard one, and also one whole spool of PLA plus filament. Now when the 3D printer is nicely in place, it's time to do the really first print, before, of course, pad leveling. This printer doesn't have automatic pad leveling. At this price point, it should have, but in my opinion, it's not a problem for two reasons. Leveling this pad is really easy. It took me 30 seconds to get this pad perfectly leveled. And the second reason, I have used GD Deck printers before and I don't know what they are doing, but the pad never goes out of the level, for real. I have used my GD Deck X Plus for more than a year and literally I have leveled the pad only one time. I have used this printer for around two months and this is the first and last time I leveled this pad. This model won't try to be anything, but anyway it turned out really nice. Now let's move to the dual extruder printing. Before we can start happily printing some multicolor or material models, the two extruders have to be calibrated. Don't worry, it's really easy to do, but a bit time consuming. The first step is to print the calibration test model. Of course, this is included with the SD card. It took around 30 minutes. When this is ready, you have to investigate the model. In my case, this blue cross has to be in middle of the grating. If this is not perfectly centered, move this left or right or up or down. For me, it took 5 tries to get those extruders perfectly calibrated. Now when this is nicely done, it's time to print some models by using both of those extruders. For one of my previous videos, I built screw bumps and those screws are printed with this printer. The screws themselves are printed with PLA, supports I printed with other extruder with PTG. I believe some of you will comment that I should use PVA, yeah I know, but I don't have access to this fancy material and PTG works just fine, and it's way cheaper. So those prints are basically multi-material prints and they turned out really nice. If you are interested in those screw bumps, then I leave the link down below for you. Also, I printed multicolor prints. I downloaded random models for this. My first multicolor print was this orange traffic cone and it turned out absolutely amazing. Also, I printed poker chips. Again, they turned out really beautiful. And not only they look good, they also feel right. And my last print with PLA was this waist. Overall, the result is normal, but one side has a lot of under extrusion. I don't know exactly what caused this. Because I have used GD Deck printers before, I know that when you use Cura Slicer instead of GD Deck own slicer, you will get way better results. All those prints in this video are sliced with GD Deck own slicer. I told you this is my last print with this extruder, but actually I did one more. And this one is an ABS test. Because this printer has chamber heating, I put this to the real test. If you know something about ABS, then you should know that printing ABS without enclosure is nearly impossible, because the layers will start separating. Even if you have enclosure, then there still might be problems with those really thin walls and with really big prints. So this is exactly what I did. I printed one ways with ways mode. So this print will be only one layer thick and it's pretty high. If this succeeds perfectly, this printer is absolute ABS king. And yeah, this is exactly what happened. This print turned out so good, and there aren't any imperfections. So this printer shouldn't have any problems printing ABS no matter what size or shape this model is. It can handle it. Now let's move on to the way more serious materials. First we have to change the extruder. This one extra print head comes with the printer and it's designed for high temperature and for exotic materials. This extruder can reach up to 300 degrees and has all metal hot end with hardened steel nozzles. So if you know something about 3D printing, then you should know that there are basically nothing that this print head cannot print. Anyway, changing print head is nothing more than just unscrewing 4 screws, then remove the cover, then the cable, unscrewing more 5 screws, then reverse and the new print head is in place. 
So after the extruder is changed, it's pretty obvious to level the bed again, and this is what I did next, but for my surprise, GD Tech printers are just weird because the bed was still perfectly leveled. When the bed level is checked, there is one last thing to do before we can start printing carbon fiber. Filament should be installed on the back of the printer. It's easy to do, but this is the worst design I have ever seen. Of course you have to store filament like nylon in some container, otherwise the filament suck in all the moisture and is not longer printable. But this is how they solve the problem with this printer is not nice. Just look how much extra space this one spool holder will take. You're gonna place this next to the wall or something, you have to leave this in the middle of the room. This is really confusing how they didn't came up with better solution, because GD Tech X Plus, which is way smaller printer, the same problem is solved way better. But ok, let's move on. My first carbon fiber print was the traditional bench boat, and it looked like this. My second try was a bit better. The bench boat isn't perfect, mainly because of those blobs where the travel moves happened. I also printed a battery holder, basically the same story, overall it's pretty fine, but again those blobs. Also I printed one undead skeleton that I print in every printer review video and it turned out better than previous models in my opinion. Maybe because there were less those travel moves that caused the ugly blobs. The last but also the best carbon fiber print I did is the vase. This is not printed with the vase mode, this model is 3 layers thick and it turned out really well. Almost perfect but again some shit happened at the one side of the vase. Just saying this is not the seam, seam is over here and this is pretty nice. There is possible to get better results by using different slicer. The GD Tech own slicer that I use in this video, I don't know, it's comfortable to use with GD Tech machines, but the end result that matters the most is way better with Gura. I know this because exactly the same story happened with GD Tech X Plus that I have used more than a year. This printer is fully enclosed and has 330x250x320 mm printing volume. The magnetic bed works really nice and has excellent bed addition. Also this printer has printing volume heating, which means it's not only enclosed printer but also can heat printing environment if needed. This is a really good feature for materials that like to warp, for example ABS, CSA, nylon and so on. Something that I haven't showed yet, this printer has camera. The reason why I haven't used the camera, well I didn't get this working. To be exact, iCookie app didn't connect with my Wi-Fi. Why I don't know, because I tried with 3 different devices, Android and iOS, and I did everything like in tutorial, but the app just didn't connect with my Wi-Fi. So I can't speak about my experience with the camera, but I know this is just a Wi-Fi camera. You can watch your print, but if something goes wrong and you are not at home, then you just keep watching how something is going wrong. You don't have option to pause or stop the print if you are away from the printer. The high temperature print head can reach up to 350 degrees. This is a lot. It means you can print even peak which is probably the most difficult material to print. Like I haven't tested this, but if this printer can do this, then what can? I also mega like this huge screen. First of all, it's good quality and really responsive. Also while printing, it shows you thumbnail of the model and there is so much settings that you can tweak while printing. And last but not least, this printer cost more than $2000. The question is, is this worth it? I think yes and no. It depends for what you need 3D printer. If you are going to print beautiful models with PLA, then you will find a better deal. But if you are looking printer that can print more exotic materials and basically is all in one, then it's absolutely for you. I have used this printer a couple of months and in my last videos you probably have already seen this. And you will see it more. I hope my quick review was helpful or at least entertaining. Thank you for watching and if you are interested in this printer, link is down below. Have a nice day, bye.